This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. Mercury has been called San Francisco Bay's public enemy number one. It is the main pollutant driving public health concerns about eating fish from the bay. And it is a prime suspect in harming the health of birds and wildlife. Its most toxic form is methylmercury, because that form bioaccumulates in critters in higher and higher concentrations as it moves up the food chain. I think one of the main reasons it's such a big problem is because there's so much of it. Not only do we have huge mercury mines, one very nearby, but then the mercury was also used in the gold mines. So we have a lot of mercury that just keeps coming down, just keeps discharging in the stormwater, and it just keeps making its way to San Francisco Bay. It comes from the ore. They mined the mercury here in the coast range. There's a very large mine in San Jose called New Almaden. And so it comes in on the sediment and the stormwater is the railroad. The stormwater is what moves it downstream all the way to San Francisco Bay. The bay is a very well mixed system with all of that wind power and the tides. So it's quite well distributed through San Francisco Bay, except it's worse right at the very south bay where that big mine, New Almaden, drains through the Guadalupe River into South San Francisco Bay. Across the New Almaden Mining District, which is an entire ridge in South San Jose, there are over 100 mine waste dumps and you just can't imagine the scale. The New Almaden Mine was the largest mine in North America and the fifth largest mine in the world. The ores were actually very deep So the miners built a network of tunnels in which they went down and got the ore and brought it to the surface, where they then took it to smelters in order to extract the mercury. And the smelters, while they were extracting the mercury, some of it was going up into the smokestacks, which would then be aerially deposited around in the area. And then the waste rock, which still contains some mercury, would be used to create roads and flat surfaces for buildings and uh, industrial processes. A number of the very worst sites in the park have already been cleaned up. I say the park, that's Almaden Quicksilver County Park, which is where the new Almaden Mining District is located. But within there, there's one area that at the moment we're quite concerned about scientists at San Francisco Estuary Institute identified that stormwater was leaching a lot more mercury from the Senator mine site than other areas. So we have a big investigation underway to figure out exactly what targeted area in Senator itself is a hot spot that we might be able to patch up in some way and stop it from eroding mercury during storm events. How do we know the mercury is there? We collect sediment, sometimes we collect water, and a lot of times we collect fish, fish that birds might eat, and sometimes bird eggs as well. So that's what we really focus on, the sediment and the biota. So we're seeing this mercury detectable in fish, and then as other fish eat fish, it bioaccumulates. The concentrations are higher, is that correct? Yeah, it's a very ecological phenomenon that you have the mercury, and then you have a water chemistry situation where you have low oxygen, You, the bacteria produce methylmercury, and then it accumulates into the algae, into the plants, and that is your biggest step. That's a factor of like 100,000 concentration. And then there's the little critters that eat that algae, and then the slightly bigger fish, we call them prey fish, and then the sport fish, the much larger fish. And it just keeps concentrating as you move up the food web. It's quite an interesting ecological Mm. and dangerous ecological phenomenon. And that's why we're concerned with folks fishing in the bay. That's right, because it's accumulated up into the sport fish. The striped bass and the shark species in particular are high-level predators. And so they've bioaccumulated more than some of the other smaller, younger fish. Scientists at the San Francisco Estuary Institute have been studying the impact of methylmercury on birds and other wildlife. Methylmercury is a very potent neurotoxin, and it tends to have effects on very early development life stages of vertebrates like us. So 
you know, if it's a bird, it might be in the egg or the chick, and it can actually cause that animal to die if the concentrations are high enough. And that's what we've started to see in some of the food webs in the Bay Area, that sometimes that methylmercury concentration is so high in the tissue of the, wild, the wildlife, whatever species it is, that we're worried that it may actually be impairing them from being able to reproduce, and then that means that their population will eventually decline. The kind of work that I've been doing lately is looking into a whole new area, which is looking at birds that eat invertebrates. So looking at birds that live in wetlands, birds that live in riparian areas, and these are not the birds you think of getting affected by mercury, like a tern that eats a fish. These are little birds, like song sparrows that eat bugs. And what we found is that their concentrations are higher than we thought. There is a significant amount of habitat being restored, wetland restoration in the Bay Area. What role does it play with respect to this mercury story? That's a great question. We did a three-year study on that in South Bay because it was such a concern for people. They thought, ooh, I don't know if we want to make more tidal marshes because we've heard that marshes can really create more methylmercury because there's bacteria in the marshes that turn inorganic mercury into methylmercury, which is the form that we're concerned about. And so we did a study to be able to ask questions to say, if I restore here, is that going to make a worse situation than I had before? And very surprisingly, what we found was that there can be better and worse situations in marshes, but it doesn't really have to do with restoring them. Some of our oldest, most pristine marshes have the worst mercury conditions for wildlife, while some of our newest marshes have the lowest. So there are patterns out there that we don't totally understand, but there's no answer, there's no data that said that restoring marshes is a big problem. Does mercury impact birds and fishes in different ways? Well, there's definitely differences. I guess I should say the first one is that birds and fish indicate different habitats. Makes sense. Birds and fish live in different places. So the birds are indicating the vegetated habitats where they live, and the fish are indicating the aquatic habitats where they live. Now, research on fish mercury in the Bay Area is, has been going on maybe, let's say, a decade longer than the bird research. So we know more about it. And one of the very recent findings is that using stable isotopes of mercury, a different researcher that was collaborating with SFEI was actually able to show that some of the actual mercury molecules that get into fish are definitely from mining in the Bay Area. And that was a really big important thing for our regulatory agencies to know that yes, it really is important to clean up these mines because we can prove that it's getting into the fish. Now it's likely that's also true for the birds, but we don't have the study yet to prove that. What's being done to remediate mercury in the Bay? In reservoirs, they're experimenting with injecting oxygen into the sediments in order to prevent the anoxic conditions that create methylmercury, which is the most toxic form. At mining sites, we actually have a proven method. We actually do bioengineering where we use plants to hold the sediment in place so that it doesn't get into the aquatic environment. We've had a lot of experience at soil bioengineering, and the way it works is that plants' roots like to hang on to the soil. And the grasses and the oaks, as they grow and the root system spreads out, they hang on to the soil. And by hanging on to the soil, they, they keep it in place and they keep the mercury in place that is attached to the soil. The mercury in the soil is in an elemental form, which is less toxic than when it gets in the aquatic system and becomes methylated. And methylmercury is far more toxic than the elemental mercury that's in the, the hill slope. So if we can keep it in place, then the risk is much lower to the environment. As we learn more about remediating mercury contamination at the Senator Mine area, we'll provide that information to you on our website. And you can also subscribe to our reports and receive them as we publish them. Thank you very much for watching. For the San Francisco Estuary Partnership, I'm Jerry Kay.